Well, I'm just going to get things started off here by asking you to grab those black song books that I passed out. I'm going to turn to page 10. We're going to do a couple songs here. I want to get your vocal cords lined up. Page 10. This is song is down by the riverside. I'm going to lay down. Sing along with me. I'm going to lay down. I want a band. 
I want to drown our bass guitar player to sing it. <laughs> that would be nice too. We're going to work towards that. So, welcome today to the third Sunday of Lent. Um, as far as the announcements go, there's a board meeting on March 13th at 7. Um, Easter sunrise service breakfast sign up sheet is in the back. Anybody who would like to sign up and help bring stuff for the breakfast, that would be fantastic. Um, also, there will be a sunrise service. We're going to hammer down the time at the board meeting. Um, Praise of worship at 10 for the regular service. And also, the special collection is going to go to Steve and the dining. So anybody who wants to get to the special collection, I think all month, at least. Yeah, all month, at least. So is there any other announcements that anybody has? The Snack Sack program is doing fantastic. Uh, Justin and Jessica have been buying all the food and bringing it up to the middle school. We've been assembling sacks for everybody and getting them out to the middle school and the high school. So that's a great program. It's doing very well. That's Wednesday, is that correct? When you meet? Uh, we meet Wednesday afternoons about 4.30 or 5 and assemble all the sacks and then hand them out to the kids on Friday when they leave school. Do you guys meet up at the school? We do. We meet at the middle school and assemble the sacks right there. So Perfect. It's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for reminding me about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your work, too. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, I do very little. Also, there's a really awesome Bible study in the morning before church at 9 in the basement. Nine Pretty awesome. We're going to be diving into the book of Luke. Yes. Let's see the what the good doctor can tell us about the life of Jesus. Amen. All right. If there is nothing else going on, um, I'm going to start with... Uh, Exodus 20 today. Read through the Ten Commandments. Here. And God spoke these words I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I am the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generations of all those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep me, keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do, you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor male or female servants, nor your animals, nor any foreign residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the seas and all that is in them but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land of the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servants or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And may God bless the reading of his word. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship and we must listen to our prayer and light another candle. Oh,
Kevin. All right, if you'd like to follow along with your bulletins for the responsive reading. The law of the Lord is perfect. Amen. The, soul. the decrees of the Lord are sure. Making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are clear. Enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure. Enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold, and sweeter than honey. In keeping them is the great reward. The message of the cross sounds foolish to the word. But to us it is the power of God. We proclaim the scandal of Christ's crucifixion. The foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than understanding. So one one announcement that I forgot is Kyle didn't put any numbers in the bulletin, so Kevin's going to let us know what pages we need to go to when we sing our songs. Because so, I can change my mind. <laughs> that is entirely true. And he is great at picking the music. So anyway, we are going to turn in the black books to page. That's how this is going to go. Page 14. Top of page 14. Let's stand up while we sing. Got your own word. I'll fly away. Oh, it's some glad morning when this life is over. I'll fly away.
I agree. <laughs> Maybe be in the spirit of prayer. Father God, thank you. We just give you all honor and glory and praise. And we thank you that even though we cannot hear the heavens proclaim your handiwork, through though the speech of the skies must be measures. Father, though we cannot hear what day and night are singing about you, though their song must be both bright and deep, and yet somehow, by your grace, you are made known to us, even through our own foolish proclamation. It is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that your word can be heard in our words. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us. We invite you now to worship with us, to lead us, to guide us, and to open our ears to what you're saying to us. And perhaps we may, we may also hear echoes of your glory in the broad firmament above, even as we pray in the name of the Christ, our Father, Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With you. I know it's a little bit windy out there. Probably some of you are going to fly kites, but isn't it a beautiful day? It's a glorious day to celebrate together and to be with one another. Thank you all for coming out, and uh, God bless you. Were there any other announcements that you all would like to share? That maybe we, yes, ma'am. I heard from Donna. She's doing well. But... Anyone else would like to share anything? Okay, I'm going to let. Kevin, take over, and yeah, let's do our hymn of prayer on page 12 in the back books. This song fascinates me so much because these words were written in the year 1225. I can't imagine that anything has hung around so long. The music was penned uh, in 1623. We've been singing this song for a quarter of a year. Turn one. It's called All Creatures of Our God and King. All Creatures of Our God and King.
shared uh, from the psalmist, Psalm 19 this morning. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. And day after day they pour forth speech. And night after night they reveal knowledge. Yet they have no speech, they use their words. And no sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. Like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. And the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm. And all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. And by them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can discern their errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sin. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgressions. And may these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Gracious God, your power is made perfect in weakness. And your wisdom appears as foolishness in this world. And Lord, we truly thank you for the scandal of the cross. In, in Jesus Christ, you overturn all our usual ways of behaving and believing. You scatter our false notions of discipleship as, as easily as coins are spilled from a box. You correct our notions of piety and order with fierce passion. Father, do not let your church become content or contained as an institution. Father, we ask that you raise to ruins what is distorted in us and raise to new life as a community so that we may be the body of Christ in and for the world. For it is with fear and joy we ask this in Christ's name. Holy Father, it is you who has called us to live before you and with one another in all faithfulness. But unable to live as you intend, we inflict harm and hurt on others and on ourselves as well. In all these ways, we know that we sin and grieve only you and your heart. Hear our prayers of intercession, Father. We ask that you restore to us communion with you and with one another that we might live in the freedom that you have bestowed. We pray for people who are victims of crime from petty theft and murder. We pray that those harmed will find healing and will dwell in safety. We hold especially close to your heart, oh God, those who have lost a loved one to violence. <coughs> we ask that you help us to offer tenderness and care in their struggles and grief. We pray also for those who have committed crimes that they may seek and find forgiveness and 
begin a new life of responsibility and integrity before you and then in the community. We pray for healing and reconciliation where trust has been broken, where hostility has flared or misunderstanding has grown. Lord Jesus, restore us not only to one another, but reconcile us to ourselves and, most importantly, to you. If restoration proves beyond hope, then grant new beginnings and possibilities for all in every relationship. Father, we seek your grace as we honor others by caring for them, being truthful and working for their welfare. Please root out in us any jealousy toward what others possess and let generosity grow in and among us instead. Gracious God, we pray for all those who are ill, especially those we lifted up this morning, whether in mind or in body or in spirit. For those lonely and isolated from community, for those burdened by guilt or grief, those burdened by just depression or despair. Do not let us turn inward as a church, Father. Let us, lest we shut out our neglect, those who long for community, a community of welcome and compassion. Father, may revival begin with us through repentance. Send us out in love, with open eyes, open ears and hearts. May we be true neighbors to one another and true children of, of our own calling, the calling which you have given to us. And even now we offer up our own silent intention. Father, for we pray in the name of the Christ Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit who has come to set us free. Amen. Christ crucified is God's power and wisdom. As Paul tells us, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand a sign. Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ and him crucified. A stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. May God bless the reading of his word. As is our custom every Sunday, 
and should be as we gather together in his name, we partake, partake of the, the cup and the loaf. This is not our sacrament alone, but for the body of Christ, for all who calls Jesus their Lord and Savior. For truly it is his table that we do in remembrance of him. And it is the Holy Spirit that calls you, even today, to hear once again the, the proclamation, the good news that Christ has died but has risen. And that is what we celebrate every time we gather. And we rejoice and give each other comfort and hope that he will return again, just as he said, and just as he did on the Mount of Olives. The blessed hope. So if you have not grabbed the emblems, there are some in the back. And please, we invite all who proclaim the Lord Jesus to partake with us as uh, we'll sing a hymn and our elder will come down and uh, we'll partake of the emblems together. Our communion hymn we're going to sing on page 30. <coughs> These thousand hills. This is a favorite of mine. You might not know it, but the, the melody is quite repetitive, so I think I'll catch on really quick. What page is that? Page 30. representation of his blood once his life but now poured out to cleanse us from our sins 
We come to this communion table remembering that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, and when he had broke it, he said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink this cup and eat this bread, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the Lord's table. And Christ invites all believers to share in his meal of grace. Every humble and contrite heart is a welcome guest. Let us pray. We need you, Lord, so we pray. Gracious God, we come to you here at your communion table, this place of forgiveness, peace, joy, and love. And as always, you meet us here, ready to feed our hungry spirits with the bread and the wine. You meet us here. You meet us everywhere. We can always count on your ever-present arms around us as we ask for forgiveness for our transgressions. Help us to find your peace, whether we are bowed on our knees or raised up in supplication with our hands to you. Open our hearts to receive your blessings of joy and love. We need you, Lord, so we pray. As we eat the bread together, remember and find hope in the fact that Christ's body was crushed under wrath so that we might get everything by grace. As we drink of the cup together, remember and rejoice that Jesus' blood paid for our transgressions and purchased our redemption. Please stay. Please be seated. On the back of your bulletin is today's gospel reading. In fact, all the readings this morning were from the lectionary, the revised common standard, the revised common lectionary, excuse me. I'm reading from the uh, New International Version. But, um, from the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. As the picture on the other side denotes, as Jesus clears the temple courts. The gospel writer tells us that when it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And in the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. And so he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers 
and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of there. Stop turning my father's house into a market. And his disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? And Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. And they replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. And then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. May God bless the reading of his word. This week, for a little bit, I've been thinking about uh, the reset button. Don't you wish there was a reset button sometime? Well, to me, the reset button is an event that comes along, ready or not, like it or not. It gives us an opportunity to do and be different. To live life in a way that, uh, well, that we haven't until this point. And if I could be so bold, I think that in today's reading, Jesus went to the temple to hit the reset button to shake up business as usual, so to speak. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the grace that you give us, even in the reset buttons of life. Father, today may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be true and pleasing to you. For truly you are my Lord, my God, my Redeemer, my all in all. For it is in the precious, precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Now here's how one commentator described business as usual. And I, and I hate to admit it, but it, it hit a little too close to home, as usual. But he, he wrote this. He's, he said, have you ever pushed the autopilot button and life became mechanical? You go through the motions, you show up, but you're not really there. Have you ever smiled that I'm good, everything's fine, smile, but uh, behind the smile there's an emptiness. You actually feel hollow, your heart is breaking maybe. Or maybe you wake up in the morning and you're still as exhausted as when you went to bed the night before. Have you ever felt like you were just not yourself, something just not right. It doesn't seem right. Boredom overcomes creativity. There's no enthusiasm, no wonder, no imagination. It's just business as usual. And that's kind of what I want to talk about is business as usual. The status quo, the same old, same old is actually a symptom and not the problem itself. And just like the animals, the money changers are symptoms, not the problem. Now, the underlying cause, if I may, might be fear. Might be fear of the present, fear of the future. The status quo might be boring, but yeah, it's predictable, isn't it? Now, the underlying cause might be grief of something or someone we've lost and, and we'll never get back. The status quo may not be engaging or exciting, but it is familiar. The underlying cause might be sheer ex exhaustion, I can't say that word, of just keeping on, keeping on, or just surviving. The status quo might not be fulfilling, but at least it's not one more thing that I have to do, right? Or I have to worry about. And regardless 
None of that sounds like the life that we were called to, does it? Or to the life that Christ wants for each and every one of us. Michael Marsh wrote, business as usual is born of forgetfulness. We forget that we, that we really are the temple of God. We forget that all of creation is the residence of God. We forget that in whatever direction we might turn, there is the face of God gazing right back at us. And as soon as we forget these things about ourselves, about each other, about the world, it's easy to fall into business as usual. And that's when and why we need a reset. Better yet, we need Jesus. When we feel fearful, sorrowful, overwhelmed, stuck, Jesus shakes us up and reminds us what truly matters. And in the context of today's reading, the Jews at the temple had lost sight of what worship is truly all about. Maybe they had forgotten. Maybe, maybe they didn't know that God was more invested in them than in their customs and their festivals. And what happens? What do we see? Jesus comes, right? Jesus enters. And what does he do? He smashes the reset button. John 1, 14. What happens when Jesus comes? He smashes the reset button and he turns water into wine. When in John 2, verse 9, what happens when Jesus comes? Smashes. The temple is no longer a structure, but in us all. Smashed in John 4. The Samaritan woman realizes her worth after meeting Jesus. Smashed in John 5. The paralyzed gathers his mat and walks away in the word of Jesus. Smash in John 6. Thousands are fed with just a couple of fishes and a few loaves of bread. And Jesus smashes the button of death when Lazarus is raised from the dead. Hallelujah. That is the God that we serve. Time and time and time again, the impossible is possible with Jesus. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. I don't, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Seems to me that business as usual, the status quo, the same old, same old, is the exact reason that God sent his only son. The word became flesh so that the temple might become human. That's a good God. And you know what? Jesus continues to hit the reset button. Because as Mr. Marsh puts, out, or puts it, there are Samaritan women waiting at the well even today. There are lame people grounded by the status quo. There are empty and hungry people that are stuck because of the same old, same old. Heck, maybe we are them. Maybe we are the misunderstood, the paralyzed, the empty, the lifeless. Maybe we need a reset button more than even we know. But as my dear old shop teacher in seventh grade, Mr. Nelson, bless his heart, used to say, it's been my experience. It's been my experience that so far that the reset button usually comes when I least expect it. And I don't think it necessarily has to be that way. I don't think it has to be that way. I think, but if, if we're feeling fear or grief or stress or stuck or invisible or empty or just flat out wondering what's it all about Austin what's the point maybe just maybe instead of waiting for a reset why don't we ask Jesus to meet us where we are for a reset if, if we have tables that need overturned or animals that need to be driven out we got to do is ask Jesus for a reset. <laughs> we are the temple of God, after all. 
I know you know this. Christ's will for us is to be alive and thriving and drawing closer to him, not as imitators, but conform in his likeness. And friends, his will for us is to shake off what is so we can be who he has called us to be. Amen? Amen. And amen. Amen. You know, revival truly starts with repentance and, and understanding that you need a Savior, that I can't do it on my own. I don't know of any person that can, to be honest. But revival begins with the confessing of the mouth and believing in the heart that Christ died and was raised again. That you believe that you are a sinner, that you need saved. That's all it is. And in this fellowship, each Sunday, we try to make a call, if you'd like to join this, this fellowship, to work out your salvation, fear and trembling, as I like to say, because the Bible says that. But in this lovingly body, of this, how do you say it? Okay. In this body of Christ, I mean, we ask that you just come down. No fanfare, but a lot of rejoicing in heaven. But if you want to give your life to God or join this fellowship, what a blessing. You don't have to wait to Easter. You don't even have to wait till next week. You can do it right now. You can be saved right now today. And uh, truly, not just a joy for me or Pastor Doug or the elders, but they would come down and they'll pray over you. And in fact, if there's anything you need to pray for, individual prayer, come down and we'll pray with you. So, but come even now. The Lord Jesus says, come even now. Yeah, I just want to keep going, but uh, and we'll sing our song of invitation <laughs> on page twelve. If you sing all the verses, right? And we'll sing all the verses. Yeah. If, if you look at any hymnal, you will find uh, dozens of songs written by Fanny Crosby, and this is one of hers. Uh, it's an older one, but uh, it's uh, one of my favorites. I can hear a banjo whenever I play this song. So if you need some uh, bluegrass gospel thing going on. It's on page twelve. Let's stand while we sing this. Ask me not, O oh gentle Savior. Study the commandments, Exodus 20. Practice the way of life that teaches. You. See how God's law revives your soul, like it said in Psalm 19.
And then the late week ahead, excuse me, we'll find time and space to listen for God's glory as it's spoken in the world around you. And may God shine upon you, Christ fill you with true wisdom and love, and the Holy Spirit guide you into all faithfulness, now and forever. Amen. This is called Go in Peace.